What's going on everybody? Welcome to another episode of Fishing Grubs. Ladies and gentlemen, today we have something totally, totally different. Today we're going to go into kind of a story time mode. And a lot of the times, a lot of the videos out there, when they go into a story time mode, I've noticed it's usually stories from the past. Well, this is not the case. This story happened just last night and it's absolutely out of control. I'm still at Mazda until the end of this week. I actually thought my last day was one day, it's this day, it's that day. My last day at Mazda is going to be on the last day of this month, so Sunday. Uh, Monday will be my first day off since September 4th. I have not been fishing since September 4th. Yesterday, I didn't have to be to work until 10.30, and I was getting out early, and I didn't have to be to work today until noon. So I thought I could get some casts in before work and I could get some casts in after work. But I didn't want to bring my boat with me or any of that, so I planned on shore fishing. And what I really wanted to see is if I could get a bigger fish out of the pond that we found a couple months ago uh, doing that shore fishing challenge with the lottery tickets. And if you'd like to see that video, we'll link it up above. I had a feeling there were good fish in this spot. So I showed up yesterday and I brought only the BBZ rat. It was cloudy, it was rainy, it's been a full moon. Um, it's just perfect conditions for the rat right now. I started throwing it and on my third cast, a big fish exploded on it. Now, I thought it was the fish of a lifetime at first because drag was just peeling. Well, after the fish got me wrapped up in the rope that is connected from shore to the fountain in the middle of this little pond, the fish got off and embedded the hook of my rat into the rope. So I couldn't get the rat off. I, I tried a bunch. It was not coming out. This thing was pegged. So I broke it off and I had some more rats in the truck. So I went back and I picked out my gray one. I was throwing a brown one at first because squirrels around here in New England right now are just going batty. I lost that rat I put on my gray one. Got some confidence, went back on the, on the water, was hoping I would get another bite. And I come around the corner, a couple casts in on this one little point, I got destroyed by a nice like three and a half pounder. So let's check that out real quick. All right, folks, we are out here on a quick mission before work. We just got a freaking solid fish on the BBZ rat. Awesome. Scale is at work actually for some stupid reason. I don't know what's wrong with me, but um, yeah. I would assume three, maybe three and some change with this gut. Oh, such a healthy fish. Yeah, dude. Uh, so we lost a brown rat earlier, right when we got here, third cast on a pretty decent fish. Um, there's some fountains over there and those fountains um, have some ropes that are tied to them and then to shore. So, my drag wasn't set on my nice swim bait rod, and that sucked. So I lost, uh, I lost my first fish of the day, and this is, and a rat, because the rat is attached to the rope over there. So if anybody wants a rat, they can go swimming for it in this really cold water. Pumped about this. Nice freaking fish, folks. Awesome, this is all recorded on my cell phone, because, uh, that's what we got. Ugh. What a beauty. Oh, man. I love the BBZ rat. I kind of had a feeling if uh, there was going to be a day where I would get some fish on it, um, where I actually had time this month, because I've been swamped working two jobs the entire month. This is literally the first time I've been fishing in weeks. And I caught this freaking nice fish. Oh, I love that. And it's perfect conditions for the rat. It's rainy, it's cloudy, it's not windy. Peace, bro. Healthy, healthy fish. Yeah. So after that fish, we were pumped. That's all we really wanted was one fish. I mean, I haven't caught a fish in almost a month, so I was excited. Uh, made a few more casts, and on my very last cast, we caught this little dink. Just got another fish. 
on the rat. That's all we got out with us. Uh, just a little guy. This was literally my, uh, I'm just doing a last cast type of thing. So we're gonna get him back in the water. We're gonna get to work. We're coming back here after night. I'm gonna bring the GoPro with me. So um, we might have ourselves a little night fishing episode. It seems they like the rat in this tiny, tiny little pond. And we already got ourselves a nice little three pounder. We will have the scale with us when we come back at night. All right, bro. Second fish on the rat. Glorious. Peace, buddy. And that was absolutely epic. Great little trip, but the best thing about this trip is it told me, one, they're eating the rat at this place, and two, the nighttime bite might be incredible. So, go to work nice and early, do a bunch of prep work. We make all of our syrups and all of the stuff that goes into our drinks from scratch. We juice all of our juice fresh daily. Um, so we, we hold very high standards. So I went into work nice and early and got a ton of this stuff done. We made a ba big batch of cinnamon simple, coconut cream, um, uh, just a bunch of awesomely wonderful things to go into our cocktails. After work, I'm pumped up. I'm ready to get back out there and throw the rat. I showed up, I threw the GoPro on, and the rest is history. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I came out here earlier this morning, the rat caught three fish lost the first one caught the second two just got out of work gonna do a round around this pond to see if we can't get another fish or two on the rat it's a full moon out but it's overcast completely Ugh, i love days like this i'm gonna make it a short trip because i do have to work tomorrow I'm kind of excited right now never fished this place at night i really just started fishing this a few weeks ago maybe a little over a month well, a few weeks ago i haven't fished in like a month so found this place a couple months ago. Let's get out there. Come on. That is a donkey. Oh, folks, nice freaking fish. Oh man, that is awesome. That's a tank. We're gonna weigh him. That is awesome. Oh. Fish. Freaking stud. <sighs> Folks, look at the freaking size of this thing. Scale zeroed. Four pound, 4.38 pounds. 4.4. 4.38. <sighs> Awesome. Well, folks, did not take long to get this freaking four and a half pound bass. 4.4 .4 pounds. What? Uh, out of this tiny little pond, this guy's gonna be ready to go. Uh, I just wanna give you one good look at him. What a freaking sweet fish. Freaking four and a half pounds, this tiny little bond. Oh man. Peace, bro. Yes. Absolutely amazing, folks. Well, probably missed the release. I don't think I pressed record. It's a possibility. 
Uh, if so, I'm an idiot. GoPro probably got it, but it probably has this camera in the way of it. Anyways, that's what we came out here for, folks. Was that one fish, and we got her. <laughs> Absolutely epic. So now, we're gonna go toss the line out for a few, a few more minutes. So good. So after this fish, I'm on cloud nine. Like, absolutely, my mind's like, um, I, I, nothing wrong could possibly happen, right? Like, nothing, right? Wrong. So, so <laughs> it's crazy. I decided to, you know, at, on my way back to the truck, I was passing the little bridge, and I decided it would be fun to throw the rat off the bridge just down the middle of these, like, two little kind of channels um, that lead from one bigger spot of the pond to another bigger spot of the pond. I'm throwing the rat on one side, nothing, three or four casts, go to the other side, go for a first cast. The rat, I think, hit the bridge, and that's what it sounded like, and it snapped. But the momentum was going so much that the thing just went fl like flying. I was like, ah, no. And I believe I got that on film as well. I lost another rat, and I couldn't really see it. It was dark, but there are lights everywhere, and I was looking all over the top of the water for it, and I could not see that darn thing anywhere. I'm sure somebody is going to find it, uh, whether it be today or tomorrow. I might even stop by, I don't know. But anyways, the rat came off, I couldn't find it, and I did not want to lose two rats in one day. That brown rat, I knew where it was, stuck to the rope, and I figured if I'm going swimming in this freezing cold water, I might as well swim after something I can actually see and know where it is. So I take off all my clothes, except for my boxers, and a t-shirt and I walked over to um, the side where I, you know, lost my first rat earlier in the day. So I figured I'd show this to you guys. Ah. That out there's the fountain. And that right there's our rat. On the first fish we lost today. I think felt huge, but my drag wasn't set. I actually think it was close to the size of the three pounder I got. Well, folks, just about my last cast. I cast the rat off into oblivion. Not gonna lose two rats today. I'm swimming. I'm swimming the, for the one I know where it is attached to the rope. It's freezing out. It's about 65 degrees outside. Water temp's probably about the same. Yeah, it's gonna be cold. But, it's got to get done. There's the rope. Up there is the deal. I grabbed onto the rope as I went out, pulled myself all the way to the rat, and tried to get it out of the rope. And it was stuck in good. I, I gave it a couple really good yanks. Uh, it was not coming out. I was starting to panic because, like, in, my body was starting to panic. My brain was trying to keep myself calm. Uh, the water was frigid, like a little, probably a little below 65. So it was, my, my body was telling me to get the heck out of there fast. Um, and I got a little angry. And so I grabbed the hook and grabbed the rope and I pulled apart. And when I pulled apart, it popped out of the rope and the bottom treble on this rat right here Obviously, as you can see, the treble is no longer there. That's because the hook, the hook was buried into my hand. In the top and almost out through the bottom. I couldn't really feel it too well when I was in the water because it was freezing cold. But I lifted my hand up and the rat was literally dangling like that from my hand. I could see that it was way in past the bar, just absolutely buried. Buried into my hand. So while swimming back, I started pushing, pushing, because the water was freezing cold and, you know, helping numb my hand, and I pushed, uh, I got it through just a little bit. Uh, oh my God, folks. I'm so dumb. That's all the way in. I just got it out the other side. I gotta get all the way through, though. Oh my God. I'm not cold anymore. I just gotta get past that barb. So, I just want to let you know I'm sitting in the middle of public right now uh, with no clothes on. Uh, trying to get this right now. I'm trying to get the rat's hook off the circle. 
Okay, we gotta get back to the car. We're really close here. I need our shirt. As you can see, we're almost through. Well, we're back to only losing one rat today. <laughs> so that's a plus. Minus is the fact that uh, I have a hook in my hand. I ain't going to the f***ing hospital either. I hate hospitals. Just gotta get this through. This is gonna be a fun episode now. Huh? We got a five pounder on my four and a half pound bass um, and ourselves. When I got back to the truck, I tried forcing it through as much as I could. I really wanted to get it out past the barb so I could break that top off and just pull it out. That's what happened the last time. If you guys want to see the first time I got hooked out, we'll leave that video linked above. That was ridiculous. But that time I was able to push the hook all the way through and snip the top off and just pull it out. Well, the two treble hooks that were buried up top that were sticking out still were getting in the way. As you can see, there's a, there's a lot of meat in there in between those two veals and these hooks. As you can see, there's a lot of extra meat in there. I couldn't go forward anymore. I was trying to push this thing through and it was basically, it was coming up to just about, just about the tip there. Like right before the barb starts to come out and it wouldn't go any further. I tried for about a half an hour. The barb. The clock was ticking and I needed to make a decision. Now, if you've seen the other video with me hooking my hand, you know that I hate hospitals and I will refuse to go to them. So obviously in my head, I'm not going. And I was pretty sure my last resort was going to be the uh, emergency room in Milford, which when I drove by it, it was closed. So that wasn't my last resort anymore. I was calling my mom, my stepdad, the entire way to their house because I knew that my stepdad would have the tools to at least hopefully start cutting this hook up that was in my hand. Now, when I got to his house, they still didn't, they didn't know I was coming. So I'm banging on the door, honking the horn in my truck, and finally got them to wake up. Uh, they came outside, Joe didn't really know it was me. He was like, what do you want? And then he was like, oh, oh, it's you, what's up? And uh, I'm, I just basically lifted my hand up and showed him the hook of my hand. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? I'm like, I, we need to cut this. So he went and got a few needle nose pliers, small version of a bolt cutter. I mean, this thing was super strong. Uh, while he was looking for that though, I got a little bit anxious and when cutting off, basically it was in like this, it was in like this. And I wanted to cut this one and this one first and then cut the base here on the one that was actually in my hand so then we could pull from the top out because there was no way of getting it out far enough to get to cut behind the barb. So I snipped this first one off. I was I was way too anxious and I snipped the, the first one off and the tip that I took so long to get out as far as I could went straight back into my hand. It's an angle that I'm worried about. Let me help get at the angle and then you push it. Oh no. What? Went f***ing back in my hand. F and went back in. So as you can see in this footage, there's two small holes uh, right down here in my hand. And that is because I had to push a new hole through my hand. Once we got that out again, uh, we snipped the other side and then I grabbed the tip with needle nose pliers and uh, lined it up with my stepdad who cut through right at the base of the very last hook here, right at the base of it, like right there. I had to line it up perfect. He snipped it, then I gave him the needle nose pliers and he pulled straight out that way, popped it out. And now today, it is super swollen, as you can probably see, super swollen. But I didn't have to go to the hospital. And we got that giant uh, 102 times strong Gamagatsu giant friggin' treble hook out of my hand, ladies and gentlemen. And we're here today to talk about it. And we're lucky, because I didn't even think about this, but when I told my coworker Brian, when I told Brian about this story, he reacted as you would, being like, oh my god, that's crazy, man. And then he was like, hey, man, what if 
What if the rat didn't come off that rope when that happened? I literally could have had my hand attached to that rope in 65 degree water. And if I wasn't able to get it off, like either I would have been extremely hurt or probably died of hypothermia. So that's crazy to think about. Definitely lucky to be here today. I definitely could have died, which is just insane to that. Like I really didn't even think about that until today when I told him the story. He's like, what if you were like straight attached to the rope still after you got that hook in your hand? I am so freaking lucky. I'm so thankful to be here today. I'm thankful for that big fish. And I'm thankful for my mom and my stepdad uh, for helping me out last night at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, you two are absolutely absolute incredible and I love you. And uh, another thank you to Nicole who looked out for me last night. When she got the message, she tried getting in touch with me and I was already in my mom's house and my phone was left in the truck. She actually thought that I had passed out trying to get the hook out of my hand, which also could have happened. Uh, but did not. This was round two with hooks in, in hands, and uh, hopefully this does not happen again. Definitely need to start being more careful uh, when around these wicked sharp hooks. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Fish and Grubs. Fish out! <laughs>